Okay, so let's talk about resawing the wax because sometimes um, you start out with a piece of material that's far too thick and you don't realize it until you're done carving. So we're going to cover a couple of ways to get your wax down to the appropriate thickness, um, but we're going to start with the biggest stock removal method first and then work down to the more appropriate methods, assuming that you start out with the correct thickness. So uh, we're going to just clamp our wax into a vise. And normally you want your vise to be bolted to the bench, but for filming purposes we have this loose vise just to show the process. And so then we're going to take our Japanese saw, and I'm lining it up so that it's parallel with our cutting plane here. Remember, it's only going to cut on the pull stroke, and we're trying to stay with an even thickness for the entire material. So getting your cut started correctly is important, and be sure to leave more material, because you can always cut it thinner, you can always file it thinner, but you can never cut it thicker, right? That's the major limitation. So I'm just making sure that my blade is still cutting straight. We're going to pause and we're going to check on both sides that this is still the same thickness. And this is still the same thickness. But uh, what you should know is that the slab of wax that I started with was actually in a wedge shape. So if we do this correctly, then the wax that's cut off, the part that we're throwing out, will be in a wedge shape, and the wax that we're keeping, which is the moon, should be relatively flat. Okay. And that is one of the advantages of using um, the Japanese saw blade over, say, a jeweler's saw, is you get a flat cut. The disadvantage is if you start cutting wrong, um, it, uh, there's really not much you can do to recover. So you want to check and make sure that you're not wandering on both sides. So I'm going to come back from this side since my angle is favoring it slightly. Um, and I'm going to start cutting from the other direction to straighten up my cut. So checking as you go ensures that you're staying close to the appropriate thickness the entire time. And so even though it's clamped in a vise, the wax is very slippery. So I'm just holding it stable as I cut. It doesn't require a lot of pressure, but it's less work than if you were to try to hold on to the entire piece. Oftentimes what you'll have happen is as you're cutting, <clears throat> it'll try to slip on you and you'll end up uh, breaking your piece from, from that slippage. You can see it's rotating again, I need to tighten just a little further. And what you don't want to do is clamp onto your, your final wax, right? The flame polished, well carved detail there. Uh, because the compression of the vise will distort the wax, make it prone to fracturing, um, and mar the surface oftentimes. It'll It'll gouge, whatever the vise is made of, will gouge itself into the surface of the wax that it's holding on to. Which is why I always keep a little handle on my wax until I'm sure I'm close to the final, final process. So now we're close to done on this side. We're going to turn it around and check, make sure we haven't wandered too much on, on this side. So you can see this wedge shape starting to form. But uh, the part we're keeping is clean. And over here you can see where I started to wander on my cut. Right here. And where we're almost through. So 
going to keep cutting on that same saw profile. Just pinching that wax to hold it steady. And again, with the wax saw, it's faster to go slower. Um, oftentimes, I'll see people get a bigger saw and they'll think, well, it's so big, I can just really start cutting faster. And they forget that the wax still has a melting property. So by the time they're done with their cut, the blade is heated up to the point where the wax is just fusing itself shut again. And it's a, kind of a chicken and egg problem of, you know, how fast can you cut? versus um, what point does the material start to fail? Like, at what point does the wax melt and refuse and clog your blade? And, and where is it all worth, you know, going through? So now you can see our part has started to deflect, which usually indicates that we're actually right there at the trough of our clamping point, um, which is a good sign. But you'll know that you're there because it'll, the vise will try and, you know, grab the saw blade. So you can see that my saw blade has cleared the vise, which means that we're cutting into our handle, which is a good sign. So at this point, we can unclamp our piece, move the vise out of the way. You can see where we're at with our cut, almost completely through. And if we just gently pull, it just breaks clean apart. So now we have a thinner version of our wax, right? And uh, you can see that my cut is not perfectly uniform, but we have plenty of extra material, which is good. And we're going to get that with the file or a piece of sandpaper. And then we have this other piece of wax that's actually a reasonable thickness to carve something else out of. So it's nice when you have spare bits, but generally that tells you, you know, you want to start with a piece that's just a couple of millimeters thick. You know, four millimeters is ample. Um, I believe this was eight when we started and so with the curve of the cutting blade we lost you know at least one to two millimeters of material uh, which would average we get three on either side okay